Good evening. It is Monday, September 12th, and it is 6 o'clock, and we are in a meeting of the Community Economic Development Committee. And I have Mrs. Snee on my right and Mr. Pierce on my left, and my name is Jeff Schilling. I am the chair, and we are here tonight to provide a recommendation to Council regarding accepting the final plat of the Fox Harbor subdivision, Section 9, and the dedication of right-of-way as recommended by the Troy Planning Commission. Who's going to provide any information on that? Uh, briefly, August uh, 24th, the Planning Commission did provide a uh, unanimous recommendation for approval of the final plat. Uh, you have that uh, in front of you, I believe, yes. Uh, that is Section 9. Uh, we do have some right-of-way that needs to be dedicated as part of that process. Uh, this consists of 21 building lots approximately five acres. Uh, there's right-of-way uh, included that is just over one acre. Um, the park board had, all, had previously approved uh, fees in lieu of, of uh, additional uh, park space. Um, so we, what we are asking, though, is that the committee uh, provide a positive recommendation to the council but that the legislation not move forward uh, until we get a signed escrow agreement from the developer. Uh, not that it's in dispute, it's just in process. We could have that before next council meeting, at which point legislation will be on there. Otherwise, it would go to the following reading. Otherwise, so, okay, so we'll have this, it'll be read, the first reading will be next Monday, but we, want to, we don't want to have a first reading next Monday. We would not put it on the uh, agenda for council for a first reading until we have the yes, escrow sure. agreement, okay. which we have done before. Sure. It's not unique to this plan. Okay. We are not asking for emergency legislation. No, we we'll, we'll do that. Questions, comments? Just are you asking that to be part of our recommendation that it wait for that escrow? Probably would be good, yes. Okay. okay. That's my recommendation. <coughs> okay. Any uh, comments or questions from other council members? If I may. Does this need to know? They're just giving a recommendation, and you're just asking to this to be put off. Is that basically what it is? Potentially put off. We, have, we do not yet have the escrow agreement. It's in the developer's hands. Um, it's the typical agreement. We just haven't had it signed and returned to us yet. Um, we don't want council to pass the legislation until we have that escrow agreement signed. Uh, so in the, in the event that we don't have it, then we would delay putting it on the agenda for uh, potentially a meeting. So we're, you're asking this to be done in lieu of amending the legislation? To add that as a, as a no, condition. we're we're asking that it be done in lieu of uh, including language in the legislation that councils authorizing the approval contingent upon. We would not have to worry about the condition because you won't even see it until that condition is fulfilled. Got it. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Any other council? Anybody in the audience be interested in commenting on this? <laughs> okay. Seeing none, uh, what's our? Uh, I, I think uh, I think we we probably want to move ahead on this uh, as Mr. Kidder can describe it. Yes. Okay. We'll move ahead with as he described it. Yes. Okay. okay. That sounds good. Okay. Um, the second thing on the agenda tonight. Second item is provide a recommendation to council regarding adopting the latest edition of the International Property Maintenance Code, IPMC, and future updates as published by the International Code Council as the Property Maintenance and Housing Code of the City of Troy and enact a penalty for subsequent property maintenance violations in a 24-month period at the same address. So we have been operating under a nine-year-old uh, code. 
Uh, we have fo uh, been following the IPMC. <coughs> we are asking that we adopt, that Council adopts the most recent edition. Uh, in your uh, memo, uh, you see that there are six, uh, we call major changes from the current code uh, to bring it up to, uh, to current uh, standards. Uh, planning staff is here if you have uh, specific questions. We are not asking for uh, emergency. We are asking for uh, the inclusion in the legislation language that would allow us to adopt future uh, additions of the uh, IPMC without having to come back to council. So we would continue to be at the most current uh, with that international code. Okay. So what's the, the downside of that would be if for some reason something in the, the, this international code is not something that we want that we want to do that it's adopted. I mean, we're essentially giving up our, our right to adopt the code to staff, is that what you're asking for? Uh, I mean, well, you're, I don't know about control, I don't know how much control you would want to have over uh, the universal code that, ever, that basically everybody follows. I'm not sure what unique circumstance we might have versus anybody else. Um, the, uh, uh, these are the, the, the common, again, universal standards that are, that are followed. Uh, for property maintenance, um, okay. it's not the unique. You know, it doesn't get into um, grass uh, at ten inches versus seven inches, or eight inches, or whatever. It still leaves those kind of decisions to the council. Is there any possible? Is there a way that you could sort of let us know when you when these amendments come through and that, that you that you've changed the code to? We could include that in an items of interest. The code changes very rarely. Okay. Um, but when it does, we can certainly include that. Yeah, I, I would. I think we'd, look, we'd at least like to know. I, I, at least I would. <laughs> From the, the, the way. Questions? Sorry. Do you have I, just, I don't have any questions. Okay. The language, the way the language reads in here is penalty for subsequent property maintenance violations in 24 month period at the same address. My concern about it is are, would there be various violations like one time they had two tall of grass and then 18 months later they were being penalized for something else. Would they be in, get a? Would that be in violation that twenty-four month period then, or is are we looking at too tall of grass both times? It would be subsequent property maintenance code violations, which is essentially peeling paint, broken windows. It, it affects the house. It's not so much the property area. While there is provisions for that, it's primarily the structure, and it has to be a subsequent violation of the structure. Subsequent doesn't mean the same. It could be different. So peeling paint one time, broken window a different. Is that accurate? That, that's accurate, but it's still in violation of the code as a whole. Okay. As a penalty. So, just, so two violations in a 24-month period, it doesn't have to be the, the same violation. It could be two, like one could be a broken window and another could be uh, a railing falling down or something like that. Yep, that's correct. Okay, so so... They could have two and then they would be fined or penalized. Yeah, it'll be an additional penalty. The only real change from the what we're adding for the subsequent is a total of about $250. We currently have an M3. This would make all subsequents an M2, which would be an additional penalty of up to $250 at the discretion of the judge. Okay. And this is not emergency, so we could no. think about this? A little bit longer. Well, we get can do we have, delay we have three readings. Yeah, you know how that works. Yeah. <laughs> but before we recommend it, moves on. Well, then that would require another committee meeting. 
and what, what kind of questions might you have? I don't know. I'm just looking at the property owner rights, but uh, safety issue is a concern on the other side, too. And that's when your concerns about these code violations is safety and property values. Well, I, yeah, I get that. Um, one of the, uh, uh, you know, if we're talking about the subsequent violation part of this, um, it is exceedingly frustrating. Uh, I know from your level, when you bring them to me, when, when, they, when they go to staff, when staff investigates, we have a procedure that starts with, you know, a knock on the door and a nice uh, reminder or yeah, yeah non-threatening uh, to uh, a more uh, direct correspondence and an official certified letter uh, to finally, after giving them due process and, and uh, timelines to comply, uh, going to court, uh, oftentimes seeing those court uh, uh, hearings delayed uh, or maybe not prioritized as much as we or you might like uh, to, uh, you know, a, a slap on the wrist or in some extreme cases uh, the order's just being uh, just ignored and then, uh, you know, we have to refile again and again and again. Uh, now we're talking about 1% of 1% of 1% of all the properties in Troy, but of course those are the ones that take up the majority of, of our time. Yeah. Yeah. And so what that provision is designed to do is to strengthen for the judge so that the judge has more leverage, has more, more teeth, those uh, who are repeat offenders. Thank you for the explanation. Okay. Any other council people have any questions or comments? By me. Yes. Uh, Mr. Phillips. Uh, the, awesome for the audience that's watching, would you please identify yourself just so they know who you are that's watching on? Yeah, I'm Austin Idemiller, Planning and Zoning Manager for the City of Troy. I would assume that uh, we have looked at this as we've just done with the zoning updates on the overlay of the historical overlay district um, that this stuff is germane to that also yeah there's a it's a separate penalties process so the zoning codes in m4 this starts out in m3 this is more dealing with um, minimum maintenance standards life safety health so it is a stronger penalty out of the ipmc okay. but, but it does go online but your your question may be it this is a city citywide Right. And so it would be enforced equally unilaterally uh, regardless of right. what part of town. Right. Um, I, I'm assuming then that uh, there were no contradictions, I mean, speaking uh, specifically with the overlay district, with this amendment or, or in these new updates that we're looking at here. There's no contradictions. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's all I have. The chair. Thank you. Any other members of council? Any audience uh, would like to participate? Okay, seeing no other comments, what is our preference here? Move forward. Move forward, Mr. Pierce? Move forward. Move forward. I think we can move forward with this then. Okay, um, is there anything else before the committee tonight? No, sir. I think we're adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank you.